Well, thanks so much for tuning into this earnings conversation with Godrej Properties. I'm your host, Neeraj Shah, and with us is Firoz Shah Godrej. Uh, let's jump straight. To, let's cut straight to the chase. Talk about the quarter, and then a brief about uh, the, the the cycle that we may be in currently. Firoz Shah, so good having you. Thanks for joining. In hope all is safe. Uh, and can can you talk a bit about uh, the quarter? That the expectations weren't the most robust, but it's come in slightly sub um, estimates. Were you? uh expecting this or has there been um an issue or two which came up during the quarter great to be with you first of all neeraj um thanks for the question look i think it's important to look at some of the you know pnl numbers but also the operating underlying numbers because with the new accounting standard where you're accounting for projects only once they are fully completed you're not actually reflecting the operations of the quarter often in in the pnl so the pnl is 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 certainly uh, disappointing and i think we we had guided at the start of the year that given covid and the impact that had on construction in the first half of the year that a lot of the project completions we had hoped to uh, deliver this year will actually slip out of the year so it's not unexpected but certainly is disappointing I think the good news Neeraj is that on the operating side things look quite robust so we delivered a booking value which is our new sales during the quarter of just under 1500 crore which was a year on year growth of about 25% um and for the year despite the disruption of covid we're now at a 16% year on year growth for the first 9 months we also very importantly saw cash flows markedly improve this quarter so collections from our customers in the third quarter were actually at about uh, a little under 1200 crore which was more than the first two quarters combined so i think we are seeing things come back to normal in terms of construction and the ability to meet these milestones that then result in these customer collections and we're also seeing fortunately i think a turnaround in the industry that has been much awaited for for the last few years yeah and i would want a couple of uh, questions on that too but just uh, first getting the nuances out of the way so from about 2600 crores of booking value at the end of quarter 2 you add another 1500 crores that i hear you say that which is which is both on a qoq and a yoy basis seems to be a good growth is this is this a trend that is building up firosha can you see that far that q4 might be at par or better because you've done substantially better than the 2600 crores in the first half I think Neeraj actually Q4 is said to be much much better than than Q3. We are actually expecting uh, to beat our previous best ever quarterly performance in terms of bookings, which was about 2300 crore in the fourth quarter of last year. Um, that will depend on some of the approvals we're expecting for new launches coming through over these next few weeks, as we expect. Um, but we have as many as 12 new launches planned this quarter, which would be a record. number i think for us or 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 the industry so if these come through or even if most of these come through we expect q4 to be a a very big quarter from a bookings perspective at so the end of uh, h2 i believe uh, the launch pipeline was about 15 million square feet i i don't know what kind of approvals came in in quarter 3 but what would the launch pipeline be currently for say 2021 So you know we typically give the financial year launch guidance after Q4 because we have better visibility at that stage but what I can say is that Q4 is going to be by far the most number of launches we we've, we've ever done even if not all of the ones that we want to do happen and I think those that spill over will obviously boost uh, you know Q1 numbers plus we've been adding quite a few new projects including two in the last quarter two new projects in in well located parts of Bangalore um so we we do think that next financial year um will be again a very strong year for bookings and will deliver sharp growth over this year which will also be a, a growth year despite the despite the challenges yeah the cycle seems to be in favor as well um you announced uh, fundraising intentions as well now even even though your net debt goes up on a quarter by quarter and i, I i'm presuming it would have gone up but your net debt to equity ratio seems fairly comfortable uh any idea and can you share anything about what's the instrument that you would likely use and what is this money being used for new launches predominantly or acquisition of land parcels yes yeah, so neeraj i think for now it's an enabling resolution the board passed in our in our meeting today so we'll obviously you know explore modalities and when whether and when to actually execute on this but i think the the broad rationale is as you rightly said uh you know the cycle is turning i think in both our numbers over the last few months or if you look at other leading developers there is a clear uptick in momentum and we're quite hopeful that that 
will lead to the next leg of the cycle. As you know, we've been in a down cycle now in the real estate sector since about 2013. So this has been much overdue. overdue. But at the same time, there is a very interesting opportunity to continue to rapidly add new projects to our portfolio. Because while the better developers are seeing good traction and the cycle is starting to turn, if you look at the broad mass of the sector, you'll still see quite a lot of liquidity issues and therefore quite a lot of developers that are offering very good land parcels at what we think are very attractive valuations. So the idea, if and when we do do the fundraise, would be to ensure that we are well positioned to fully capitalize on that opportunity. Frankly, we already adequately capitalized, as you mentioned. Um, you know, our, our gearing level currently is only about 0 0.6 uh, is to one. Um, so we have some more room for investment, but I think this will give us the opportunity if we do it for really disproportionate investment, which will really allow us to again more rapidly move the needle on consolidation. So I think that's something that we'll we'll figure out over the next few weeks and, and months. Um, but it is, I think, a period that's filled with opportunity for the company at the moment. Yeah, I, I reckon somewhere along in quarter two, you had mentioned that you don't mind going up to net debt of uh, close to one as well. So that headroom stays. The question though, Firosha, that I have is that you, you, you guys were believed to be those champions of, uh, or pioneers of the model of, uh, co-development, right? But you don't own the land and you are essentially developing that piece. Do you, have you kind of shifted or taken a pivot towards the old way of, or maybe old way, the earlier way of yours of owning the land and building it yourself instead of getting into the JD model? So not really needed. I think we, there has been a partial shift, but I think the, the real underlying strategy that led us to the joint venture model at that time was that we wanted to maximize risk adjusted returns. And I think at times when land values become quite high or you know, market conditions are a little bit frothy, you, we are not likely to be the ones who want to pay that kind of money for upfront land parcels. On the other hand, when market conditions are as they've been over the last three years, which is quite depressed with a lot of good deals to be had with uh, you know, valuations at levels where we think we can generate similar to joint venture risk-adjusted returns, we are quite open uh, to doing that. So I think you will see a mix of projects. Uh, joint ventures will continue to be the majority of the projects we do. But also as the company scaled, I think we are looking quite closely at the kind of per pro project or per square foot level returns, if you will, to make sure those are also moving the needle to the company. So I, I, we're hopeful that as the projects that we've been adding over the last two or three years enter the project, the, the company's PNL over the next couple of years, you'll see growth both from the scale of bookings having grown, as has been the case over the last few years, but equally from Goodrich Properties' share of the return in each project having markedly increased. So those two factors we think can more rapidly drive growth. And we'd continue with that similar sort of policy if we did raise any additional capital, which is located to be as asset light as possible, but at the same time, not hesitate to purchase land if it's available at the right valuations. One final question, Firosha. Uh, multiple notes state that the affordability for the Indian buyer or the, for the Indian real estate sector, let's put it that way, the offerings have been affordable for quite a while. What was missing to make the cycle turn was the buyer sentiment and that has certainly turned, one, because of the rates and two, because of the fact that the government policies have been favorable as well. Would you kind of second that? And do you reckon that this will last for the foreseeable future? Yes, I would fully agree with that. I think this is a weird sector where sometimes you can't quite, you know, you can't explain exactly what's happening just by looking at the economic underpinnings. So I think this idea of sentiment towards the sector actually plays a big role. Um, and that se sentiment for one reason or the other over the last three or four years has been getting worse and worse and worse. Um, and now I think we have all the things falling into place quite nicely. First, as you rightly pointed out, interest rates are the lowest they've been in, in pro probably 20 years, maybe ever. Um, you have uh, affordability having improved markedly because if you look at it for five, six years now, property prices have been flat. People's incomes have been going up over that period. And as we talked about, interest rates are much lower. So affordability is at its best ever levels. You have very supportive government policies. As you know, here in Maharashtra, we've had this temporary stamp duty reduction, the premium reduction. And you also have a situation where we think there's quite a lot of pent up demand because as actual sales have dropped over the last six, seven years, it's not that Indians suddenly didn't feel the need to or want to buy a home. 
it's that they were worried that you know economic conditions weren't suitable or that they might get a better deal by by waiting so i think that sentiment is starting to shift and most people are now starting to think that now is absolutely the right time to purchase so i do think you'll see that momentum build and look the you know for better or worse this is a sector that goes through relatively long down cycles but fortunately also relatively long up cycles so my expectation is that we are at the very early stages of what hopefully will be an up cycle that lasts over the next few years um which gives a, a lot of opportunities yeah well um, all the best for that firosha i i need hope that turns out to be true and better than what you anticipate so thanks so much for speaking to us today and all the best for the quarters ahead thanks very much dinesh viewers thanks for tuning in